Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, today on the table, we have a very interesting topic, which is uh, top reasons why India employer branding programs fail. Uh, now, at the outset, let me also um, take the liberty to say that all of these reasons that we're going to be presenting to you uh, will indeed be basis our research of having uh, delivered multiple employer branding engagements through the course of five years, having worked across diverse segments of the industry, having worked across uh, a different variety of organizations, leading organizations, etc. And uh, this is uh, purely our uh, research and synthesis of that research, uh, wherein we would like to pinpoint some of the reasons why we believe branding programs uh, do not take off in the uh, way that they are envisioned. Right. So. Um, First and foremost, I want to also walk you through um, the branding, employer branding POVs, the point of views that we have within uh, uh, the employer branding practice at Zanoof. Of course, we have a, a very robust program through which we help organizations to uncover their employee value proposition, to design it, and to also activate it. Uh, beyond that, uh, the, the point of view, the first one that we're talking you through is uh, the top reasons why Indian employer branding programs fail. So uh, what we're presenting today are some of our snippets from that particular program itself. And then the second point of view is on uh, persona-based employer branding. This is, again, a new trend that we're seeing emerge in the industry where a one-size-fits-all approach to employer branding uh, just doesn't work. And companies today are going all out to identify the different talent personas they have within their organization and what is going to suit the needs of that particular talent profile. Another topic which is gaining a lot of momentum in the industry is around decoding Gen Z at workplace. And especially if you um, see for a significant amount of software and internet industry, uh, the bulk of their uh, population is almost at 7 to 80 percent of their workforce are folks from Gen Z or millennial uh, generation. So what can be done differently in order to engage and redeem this talent pool? So a wide variety of point of views. And if at any point of time you uh, have an interest in any of these point of views, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Right? And uh, moving on to um, further around what are the um, takeaways for organizations? Why should really organizations in, invest in employer branding agendas, right? Like, uh, and, and you know, this, this question is coming in because a lot of time employer branding uh, agendas we uh, see um, can be shelved on the tables or they can uh, probably end up uh, receiving a second priority over other business prerogatives. But what? Our research establishes is that through a concerted, focused employer branding agenda, companies have a very tangible return on that investment. Just to indicate on the slide here, what you see is uh, 75%, and that's the quantum by which an Indian multinational and IT services consulting companies reduced its cost per application and cost per hire by implementing employer branding programs. 40%, and that's the quantum by which a leading American-Irish multinational conglomerate increased the retention rate of new hires after it implemented an employer planning program. Not just that, they actually experienced an 18% reduction in the employee turnover after launching EVP branding campaigns. 14%, and that's the number by which a company which specializes in digital automation enhanced its conversion rates by actually deploying employee advocacy programs, early career talent programs, and recruitment campaigns, 60%. That's the quantum by which an American multinational consumer product company achieved diversity hiring by implementing diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy, thereby also reducing 31% of its hiring cost and achieving 17% decrease in offer decline ratio. If these numbers are not enough, then I'm not sure what is. Uh, but the idea here really is that we all as branding leaders need to have a starting point where we are establishing a solid business case for why specifically an employer branding program 
and a curated one for India centers is really required. Let's get straight to the point around why do India employer branding programs fail? And even before I delve into the reasons per se, I would encourage the audience to type in their questions, their thoughts and feedback on the chat links here. Um, by the way, we're going to be having a very uh, uh, detailed Q&A and open feedback discussion where I would like to invite you all to share your thoughts and perspective, whether our research and points resonate with you or you have an alternate point of view, right? Now, the very first reason why we believe India employer branding programs fail to take off is the lack of deep understanding of India talent market. Now, um, just a question here to the audience, which is, uh, how do you believe is uh, India and talent market really different from the rest of the world? And I would uh, encourage the audience to um, either type in their responses on the chat, or maybe if any one of you want to unmute and uh, talk through your observations, please feel free to do that. Yes, please raise your hand if you have a point of view to add in. All right, I think people still need to warm up. I'm not receiving any responses, but yes, uh, Mehul, please uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and share your perspectives. Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. So as far as I know in the Indian talent market, as far as I have seen, the people are a bit uh, very concerned about you know, working as a on a term of contractual based, or maybe you can say on a par hour based. So that is the one thing. And the rest of the world, if you if you see if if you say like the people are much much interested in working on the par hour based, other than other than Indian market and and India, the people run forward for the like okay, whatever whatever the brand it will be like if they are getting a higher salary, they just run. People don't study about the what company is doing, what company is not doing, what exactly their funds and all those things are there. So as far as I have understood, there are like a lot of factors cover in the Indian market as far as in the other other world. Like so other yeah. Right. Absolutely spot on uh, Mehul. I think uh, we our research indicates some of those pointers as well. And I'm also reading out uh, some of the comments that have come in on the chat window. Uh yoga for example says that India talent market is uh, Full of uh, folks with general and niche skill set with abundance in job opportunity. Uh, Varun uh, says that uh, there is a diversified, multi skilled, low cost talent market. Uh, so, all valid perspectives. And let's, let's go to what our research indicates. Now, some of our research, what that indicates is that. Uh, what our research uh, really indicates is that, uh, yes, Abhay uh, mentions that we have a much younger working population. So all valid points. And if I were to sum up all of these points, uh, what our research indicates is that India is a talent pool of 5.1 million tech talents, right? With university supply of 8.1 million graduates every year. And out of these university supply, there are 2.1 million students who are graduating in STEM streams, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now, of this, 1.5 million talent pool is employed by what we call as the GCOEs, the Global Capability Centers or the Global Centers of Excellence. Now, imagine the availability of talent pool itself. Now, what makes India talent market really hot is that uh, you, of course, have uh, almost 15, 40 GCOEs in India as of date for NASCOM estimates. In addition to that, there are 25,000 plus technology startups in India, uh, which deploy 6.6 uh, lakh people and uh, through direct jobs and 34 lakh folks through indirect jobs. And this is the amount of employment generation that has happened in the last one decade itself. Now, uh, some of you mentioned that uh, India talent pool is young. Yes, you're right. Um, our average age uh, is 28 years uh, and we're much younger compared to the uh, rest of the world. 52% of our population comprises of Gen Z and millennials, uh, which is much higher 
compared to Gen Z and millennial population globally. Our talent pool has 29% representation from women and 9% of our talent pool uh, identifies themselves as LGBTQIA+. Now, if you see, uh, also India offers a very attractive value proposition when it comes to uh, organizations to come in and establish their centers because our talent, talent demand supply gap is the least across the world, right? So it's 25.6%. And that is significantly lower if you compare that to other GCUE hotspots like US or China. When I consider all of these factors uh, and additionally basis our research of reaching out to talent pool year on year, uh, we repeat these exercises of gauging the pulse of talent every six months, it emerges that the brand factors that our talent prefers from their potential and their current employers are predominantly around career growth, job role, and compensation. I think one of you all did mention uh, compensation, yes, if you're operating in India talent market, that's a prerogative for people when they look out for their current and potential employers. Right. Now, uh, also what's unique about our India talent market is that 78% um, of us actually have a deep emotional connect with the brands that we choose to associate ourselves with, right? Um, if you see the brand, that also indicates that the brand loyalty could be very high. And that is something we believe that the organizations must exploit and tap into. Um, another uh, <clears throat> opportunity for organizations is that uh, you have uh, content on social media, which is uh, focused on emotions, which is, uh, we believe, two times more effective than content, which is transactional. And also when I talk about different social media uh, channels, right? India talent is actually highly engaged on social media and it has maximum users of 87% on Instagram, right? So all of these dynamics is what makes India talent market really unique and different. And uh, which means that uh, what we are establishing is that uh, we need to have a slightly different strategy when it comes to tapping into the uh, India talent market, and we need to have contextualized strategies in order to uh, resonate with this talent pool. Right? Um, moving on to uh, the different anchors for lateral talent and uh, Gen Z talent, if you see uh, what we're trying to depict here is, uh, again, basis of our research, uh, what are the career anchors which lateral talent prefers and what are the career anchors which Gen Z talent prefers, right? And this is, again, uh, basis some of the uh, research that we keep doling out uh, almost every six months. And it emerges, if you see on the left-hand side, or we're depicting a triangle and triangle uh, depicts the hierarchy or the preference of brand factors. Now, at the bottom, what you see are the hygiene factors. Now, what do we mean by hygiene factors? Hygiene factors are those which, if provided, do not ensure satisfaction, but in the absence of those hygiene factors, you run the risk of disengaging your talent. Right? If you see of all the companies that we surveyed, the companies that were providing hygiene factors of job role, culture, and benefits, uh, they definitely, uh, saw a higher preference from lab to talent. But even of all the companies that provided hygiene factors, the top preferences for lateral talent in terms of motivators, like anchors which actually motivate them to accept a job and sustain in that job are compensation, flexibility, and the top of the pyramid you see is career growth, right? Now, uh, when I contrast that against uh, Gen Z, uh, well, yes, there is a slight difference here of all the companies that are following uh, or, or rather uh, disseminating these uh, six brand factors that we have established. The hygiene factors, which is baseline, that's table stakes, that's something which talent would automatically expect of their organizations were work-life balance, flexibility, and inclusion and diversity, right? But what really pivoted uh, uh, the decision of these uh, Gen Z folks, and, and when I say Gen Z, uh, these were either students from uh, penultimate or final years of their engineering and MBA curriculum, 
or people who have uh, just joined the organization with zero to two years of experience. They said that for them, the motivators were the kind of job role that is being offered to them, the compensation, and the aspect, prospects of career growth. Right? So not too dramatic a difference, uh, but what this really brings out is that some of these factors are now table stakes for organizations, uh, specifically around inclusion, flexibility, work-life balance, and culture. And what's really going to tilt the uh, decision in favor of your organization are brand factors of compensation, career growth, and flexibility. Now, um, another um, aspect of our research was that uh, when you talk about talent engaging with your employer brand, what is the kind of interaction that this talent pool prefers, right? Like, how do they prefer to engage with your brand, um, really? And if you see on the graph at the bottom, what we have indicated is the kind of interaction that this talent pool prefers, where P actually indicates percentile, which means when we rolled out this survey with multiple choice options, there were highest number of people who said that they prefer personalized interactions with the leadership of the organization, right? Which means the content, which is uh, curated in form of testimonials, podcasts, or even employee stories uh, receives the maximum traction when it comes to your social media. Another 78 percentile people said that they connect with the organization primarily through the consumer brand of the organization. What does that mean? Uh, a lot of us, for example, and I quote this example very often, we grew up, at least the millennial generation, uh, grew up using Hotmail and Gmail and Google products uh, which means that consumer brand was so embedded into our day-to-day -day lives that we automatically developed a preference for that kind of employer brand, right? So Google continues to be uh, the top most employer brand uh, in every survey that we roll out. Another preference, another uh, type of interaction that uh, uh, talent today prefers is uh, through social media, where around uh, anywhere around 38 to 63 percentile of people said that uh, they prefer interacting digitally, wherein they would probably go to the social media handles, say Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. And they would like to read up about the different articles which are getting posted, the kind of blog posts, uh, and they'll probably take the effort to watch the reels, micro videos and carousels. And uh, I say micro videos because uh, you see the attention span of people is really low and uh, videos which are very lengthy in uh, um, lengthy in their format, typically receive low traction. And finally, a very low preference for uh, conventional channels of communication, like, uh, you know, probably some of the standard emails, company-wide org announcements, uh, infographics, company news and contests, etc. The conventional channels are actually not so popular when it comes to um, the talent pool, right? So if you really see, uh, when I look at all of these uh, preferences, it definitely indicates that uh, organizations must focus on communicating the value proposition in terms of the kind of career prospects that they can offer to their employees and potential talent, uh, as well as uh, building more personal interaction, uh, either with the leadership teams or with the uh, HR, with skip level managers, et cetera, because uh, that, in our experience, really creates that stickiness for talent to uh, connect with the uh, with the employer brand of the organization. Another aspect of our research is that uh, when you tap into the right side of the brain, that's when you as an organization can create a deeper connection for this talent pool with your brand, right? Now, it's a very simple analogy that, uh, uh, you know, which has its roots in individual psychology that we've depicted on the left-hand side here. The left side of our brain is the part of the brain which is responsible for logical thinking. It's focused on facts. It's focused on information. Uh, it's probably stimulating your maths and science orientation. Uh, pure, works purely on transaction basis. And the right side of the brain, however, is uh, the part of the brain which is emotional, which is uh, more intuitive, which is more imaginative. It's focused on art and creativity, prefers fiction, and prefers creative storytelling, right? So what this means for organizations is that 
more and more, we have to start tapping into the right side of the brain, um, which brings out a level of emotional connection for this talent pool, right? And why do we say uh, really right side of the brain? Some of the uh, stats that I have on the slide here actually uh, make the point. Like we said, 78% of the India talent would actually have a deep emotional connect with the brands they want to associate with. And uh, if you see, even from an advertising and a marketing, product marketing perspective, emotional connection has actually established brands like Tata Sky, Holix, Surf Excel, uh, Maggie. And some of these brands actually have a consumer base which defies all regions, age group, and gender. Also, when you talk about India talent pool, you have a workforce which is a very uh, intensely a uh, diverse mixture of people from different religions and backgrounds who have a high sense of deep-rootedness when it comes to culture and belongingness. And one of the ethos which is instilled in us uh, from very young age is that work is worship, right? Which means that for us, we need, we observe our workplace as a place which is uh, pious and therefore uh, that has a deep emotional connection. Even when you talk about social media platforms, we just said that the consumption is highest for content, which is uh, which has an emotional appeal. And uh, you have a lot of Indian talent pool, almost 87% of the social media users are actually logged on to Instagram. Now, moving on to the other uh, aspects of what makes uh, Indian for brandings uh, ineffective is... Uh, our, our point number two, which is around dominant consumer brand overshadowing the employer brand of the organization, right? So when I talk about the consumer brand, it's the outward facing brand, right? It's about how your customers uh, relate to the organization, to the products and the services that you have in the market. But when I talk about employer branding, it's about how you as an organization brand yourself as a great place to work. It's about tapping into uh, Top talent, attracting top talent, being known for your tech capabilities, positioning yourself as an innovation leader, um, and, and resonating, therefore, with the digital and the tech talent pool that we're talking about. Okay. Now, one of our research indicates, uh, and, and this is something that we do very often, we go over the social media handles of uh, clients that we work with just to understand that what percentage of the content is consumer-focused, and what percent of that content is employer brand focused, talent focused? And uh, to our surprise, what really emerges is that almost 80% of the content on social media is, uh, um, sorry, Pinky, can you please uh, go back to, your, to the previous slide? And it, it emerges that 80% of the content on social media handles is actually consumer centric. And it's only 20% of the talent uh, content, which is talent centric, which means that in a lot of ways, your consumer brand could be superseding your employer brand, right? So it's a lot incumbent upon you as an organization to position yourself as a consumer and an employer brand, wherein you're actually creating that fine balance between both the aspects of branding. Now, let me take you through a small exercise where uh, we actually have some logos of uh, uh, these organizations. And what I would like for you to do is uh, uh, just type in in the chat window uh, what comes to your mind when you look at these logos, like what would you associate that brand with, right? And uh, I would appreciate if you could just quickly type in your responses. Uh, so first up, we have... Continental, all right. Somebody said tire, all right. Automotive, all right. All right, what comes to your mind when you think of L'Oreal Paris? Beauty products, passion, all right. Cosmetics, fair enough. Let's look at our third logo. Lily, all right. Someone mentioned uh, clothing, not really, <laughs> all right. Okay, let's, let's go to the medicines, yes, all right. Pharmaceuticals, right. Let's go to the next logo. All right. PNG, what comes to your mind? Uh, someone actually mentioned FMCG previously. Consumer products, shampoo. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's go to the next logo. Netflix, web series, OTT, entertainment, OTT platform. 
All right, streaming platform, fair enough. And the final logo, Google, top employer brand, advertising, search, search engine, search engine, search engine. Brilliant. All right. So what are we trying to establish here, right? Now, um, when you look at all of these logos that we presented to you, the first top of the mind recall uh, that happened was what is the consumer brand of these organizations, right? But let me present to you some facts which might startle you. When you talk about Continental, it's a manufacturing organization tires, yes? But are you aware that Continental is paving its way towards establishing itself as a tech-led brand? And it's talking about innovation with its engineering capabilities and themes in India. And that's what it focuses, posts a lot on its social media handles. L'Oreal Paris, uh, most of you said uh, it's a brand about beauty products, fashion. But what we want to also share with you is that L'Oreal in India is striving to establish itself as what we, they call themselves as a beauty tech brand. And they now want to start driving technology in a narrative uh, when they would like to focus insanely, insane amount of focus on artificial intelligence, et cetera, to get the right texture of the fashion and the beauty products which suit the Indian skin type. Uh, and when you talk about Eli Lilly, yes, pharmaceutical organization known for the medicines, uh, yes. But are you aware that Eli Lilly is also working towards building a brand which is technology and innovation driven? Uh, but we see that it's largely dominated by the consumer brand and the employer brand. And when I talk about uh, Procter & Gamble, yes, while it's known for the products and the uh, learning and development career anchors that it provides to the organization. And it's very vocal on social media for promoting their employer brand, talking specifically about what are the professional development programs that are available to their entry level and to their managerial cadre. Netflix, uh, yes, you did mention OTT and web series, but are you aware that it's also known for its tech capabilities and a very high level of flexibility in the organization? And Google, like most of you said, is definitely known for its strong tech capabilities, great employer brand, and it's consistently topping the charts in all of our employer brand perception uh, in uh, perception surveys as well. Uh, but what we also, like I said, uh, plays a significant role in positioning Google as a top employer brand is also the fact that uh, the day-to-day -day usage of the products is so built and hardwired into our everyday working lives that uh, the repeated reinforcement of brand happens so often that Google invariably has occupied that position, right? So just some of the stats on the right-hand side of um, the slide here. Like we said, 80% of the content is on social media handle, happens to be more consumer-centric and only 20% is talent-centric. And therefore I'm not surprised with uh, most of the audience identifying uh, more with the consumer brand rather than the employer brand. And 30% uh, of the candidates that we surveyed actually said that they would not work for an organization which has a diminished tech-based branding, which means that organizations these days must invest on showcasing their digital transformation, their digital acceleration capabilities, which is more and more becoming a preference for talent to uh, go ahead and apply for opportunities in your specific organization. All right, okay. Now, um, going to the next point on uh, why Indian employer branding programs fail is a very uh, implicit uh, point that uh, came across through our research, which is on lack of investment in the leadership branding. What do we mean by that, right? So now, if you, if you really see uh, leadership branding, first and foremost, what do we mean by leadership branding, right? Leadership branding is actually the representation of a leader in the minds of others, right? And think of it as a visual representation of what your organization stands for, right? It's building the leader itself as a brand which represents the values, the ideals uh, of, of the organization, right? And also what happens is that an organization's brand is shown and experienced through the action, words, and the demeanor or the behavior of the leaders. Now, for our research, what emerges is that significant number of organizations lack strong leadership personas, leaders who could actually enjoy a mass followership, which means that there is 
a huge opportunity there for organizations to invest in leaders who can actually enjoy mass followership and create that connect with the talent, right? And when I say leaders, think of, for example, uh, uh, maybe uh, a Sindhu Gangadharan from SAP, and we have some use cases to build the point. Think of uh, some of us starting out from colleges and getting inspired by Ratan Tata's and Narayan Murthy's of the world to join those respective organizations, right? Which means that you need to create as an organization a leadership brand which reflects the personal values of the leader and your journey as a leader so that you can actually create a more compelling organization brand. I just why specifically in India do we need to invest in uh, leadership branding? Because we believe that India is the leadership export hub of the world. Just some statistics there, right? As of 2022, we have global leaders, 5,000 plus global leaders, which means these would be leaders who could be in global roles sitting out of India, or they could be seated in any part of the world and holding a global portfolio. And this number is expected to multiply by four times. And we're expecting 20,000 plus leaders by 2030. And when you talk about women in global roles, we're talking about greater than 18% of these global leaders being women. And that number is again expected to cross 30% by 2030. At the bottom of the slide, we have some of these uh, leaders who uh, have been holding global portfolios for a long time, uh, probably some of the familiar faces for you. Uh, but most importantly, uh, the point that I want to make is that how does leadership branding actually help in employer branding, right? Now, when we surveyed the talent pool, it emerged that 82% of the employees are more likely to trust a company wherein the leadership team engages in the social media. And 62% of the leaders from top organizations, 68% of them, almost two thirds of them, are not active in social media, right? And what social media does is, of course, expansion of trust through uh, social media employee advocacy. And 22% of the business leaders with active leadership engagement are more profitable than those with less active leaders. And that, I believe, is a strong enough reason for companies to invest in employee branding. Now, when you have leaders advocating your employer brand on social media or through in-person connects, you actually create a differentiated personal leadership brand in a very intense talent market. You expand your trust by social media advocacy, and which in turn helps you to attract right talent, retain this talent. How many of us, like I keep saying, got inspired to join our first organization based on the image of the leader that we had in their mind, in our minds. And just to demonstrate this point here, I have some use cases from SAP, where Sindhu Gangadharan, who's the SVP and MD of SAP Labs, enjoys almost 78,000 followers on her social media handles. And if you see the kind of posts that she puts in, brings a lot of authenticity where she's seen connecting with women leaders, uh, creating a brand perception of an inclusive organization, uh, creating uh, that authenticity that, you know, she's also been the one who's risen to the top through some of the experiences and challenges in her own uh, struggles of her career journey. And on the right hand side, she's seen interacting with uh, employees from SAP, uh, sharing her own experiences as a manager, uh, thereby just bringing about a very authentic leadership brand. And moving on to the next point that we have is a stronger disconnect between your brand promise and the internal employee experience can also be a derailer for your India employer branding charters, right? Now, uh, when you talk about a brand promise, right? You know, an organization brand, an employer brand, a brand is always a promise that you make to your employees. Now, for our research, 81% of the fresh talent would join an organization basis what they believe is promised to them and communicated to them through the various touch points, right? And through employee review platforms and job review platforms, uh, the top employers actually make sure that uh, employees actually experience the brand the way it is positioned in the external ecosystem. Now, what happens is that if your brand promise is different from the employee experience, 
you end up failing the expectations of your employees. And sooner than later, they're going to leave your employer brand. And probably if it created a negative experience in their mind, they are going to speak about their not so great experience on other job review platforms and other social media platforms, which again would create a spiral of negative employer brand for your organization. Now, what does our research indicate the impact of the disconnect between your brand promise and your internal employee experience, right? 63% of the employees that we surveyed said that they feel that the brand constantly fails to deliver, which means what they say and what they do is inconsistent. 31% of the employees feel that external brand, which is communicated, is different from the internal environment of the organization. 25% of the organized, uh, employees that we surveyed said that there is a lack of sense of belonging within the organization that we work for, right? And if you see what do some of these stats actually indicate, of course, if your employees are not viewing your employee experience in which is consistent with the brand that you promise, it's going to lead to lower employee motivation, lower connect with the organization. First, like I said, negative word of mouth, when it comes to your um, employer brand. And disconnect between values and employee experience, which again has led to phenomena of quite quitting where people could stay kind of disconnected and passively engaged with your organization and jump the job at the first available opportunity. Now to demonstrate this point, I have a use case from uh, TCS where they launched a career wellness program with an intent to create a future ready workforce. Uh, which has uh, the essential digital skills for creating a purpose-driven career engagement and a model that invests in the growth of the employees. And through this program, they increased the retention rate to about 88%, right? Uh, more than 417,000 next-gen uh, tech-ready employees uh, by the time it was 2020. And they actually reported 37,000 cases of contextual talent mobility within the company, which enabled employees to work in roles with complementary skills uh, with a total of more than 43 million learning hours. And another uh, reason why we believe uh, the brands uh, fail to deliver what they promise is uh, the brand dilution, which happens from universities to corporates, right? And uh, in the process of hiring, uh, talent, fresh talent from universities, the brand really dilutes at different touch points. Right? Uh, if you see in the next slide, uh, the different stage gates through which a student proceeds from university to their employer branding, right? Uh, they'll probably go through the interview process, they will go through some pre-placement talks, they will have the offer, role, offer letter being rolled out to them. Now at different stages, at different touch points of a uh, Pressure student with the organization, there could be many brand derailers for the uh, student. For example, if they've had a poor experience during the internships or live projects, that could be a derailer. In the pre placement talks, if there is a lack of interaction built in, a lack of connect with the leader of the organization, that could be a derailer. If your interview process is unstructured and biased, that would be a derailer. If your offer letter is derailed, uh, is delayed or there is a lack of communication from your organization uh, in the sense of engaging these pressures, that would be a derailment. And finally, when they reach the level of employee onboarding, a lack of structured onboarding, wherein there is adequate communication about the policies and benefits of the organization, a good immersion to the, into the workforce, a good level of pre-boarding that has happened, that again could be a derailer. So you see multiple touch points wherein there are multiple negative experiences could actually lead to a dilution of your employer brand when the students graduate from university to the corporate. And finally, um, going to the next um, and the final reason for uh, lack of uh, effective employer employer branding programs would actually be the lack of autonomy within the India Center of Health, right? Now, what do we mean by lack of autonomy uh, within India centers? Now, uh, if you really see uh, for our research, uh, we it emerges that the employee experience in the India centers is hardly perceived as the same experience what would be in a corporate or a global headquarters, which means that 
uh, somewhere there is a lack of uh, standardization or lack of universal employee experience across different quarters or locations of the organization, right? Now, when I say uh, lack of uh, consistent experience, what I'm also referring to is that the EVP factors which are perceived in the global headquarters versus India headquarters could be different. And what also typically happens in our experience of working with the different client organizations is that the autonomy largely rests with your global headquarters. Um, in India centers, we see that the leaders may not necessarily own the sponsorship, the budgets, or the agenda uh, for the employer branding programs. And therefore, when so much of autonomy rests with the global headquarters, India centers tend to operate in a slightly defined boundary of what they can and cannot do within the India talent market itself. And if you see uh, how this really impacts employer branding is that 46% of the employees actually feel that there are uh, hardly any India-centric updates on your social media handles, right? Which means that there's a clear lack of dissemination of EVP factors which are important to India talent demographic profile. And this one is startling, right? 68% of the organizations do not have an India-specific talent page itself, which means that is leading to a very poor center branding of your organization. And 17% of the employees do not join an organization with an unclear branding of the specific center across different touch points, which means that these individuals said that they would not connect to the India center of a global organization. And finally, what I want to get to is um, a final point around the inability of organizations to humanize their employer brand. Now, when I say inability to humanize the employer brand, what we mean is uh, how can you make your brand, uh, brand tone, more personal, more engaging, more approachable, right? So say you do have EVP pillars, which you have defined, but if your EVP pillars do not are not in sync with the policies and the benefits and the infrastructure you are doling out in order to care for your employees, there could again be that dehumanization of the employer brand. Okay. Which means that how you as an organization believe in creating employee-friendly policies, which are also communicated in your EVP, player, EVP uh, pillars, how do you create an inclusive infrastructure which takes care of unique talent profiles like people with disabilities, working mothers, uh, people who are proceeding on maternity leave, et cetera. Okay. And if you see, uh, I have a couple of use cases of organizations which promise certain EVP players, and that's also communicated in their uh, uh, social media branding. For example, TCS uh, speaks about fitness first and mental well-being. And if you see, they're actually promoting their four pillars of holistic well-being uh, which speak about healthier lifestyle, work-life balance, emotional health, etc. And on the right-hand side, we have the use case for Microsoft, which communicates inclusion as a very important brand factor and how it's creating an infrastructure, equal workplace for people with disabilities, giving them a good ergonomics, a safe space to work, a furniture which is comfortable and takes care of their unique needs. And all of this... Uh, are in our research, the top reasons why India employer branding programs fail to launch, fail to create an impact. And uh, at the end of it, I'd just like to also take a moment to specify that we have a employer branding program at Zanop, which uh, through which we conduct an employer brand audit. We determine the meta EVP of your organization. We profile the Uber personas in your organization. We discover your EVP, we design the meta EVP and then we activate the EVP. And if you're interested in walkthrough or an overview of this um, branding program, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'll be happy to also connect with uh, you and your key sponsors, your leadership team, or your global leaders to give you a walkthrough of our employer branding program itself. With that, I come to the end of this uh, presentation, and uh, I would now uh, like to hear your thoughts, your uh, inputs, uh, and we're open for this discussion now. All right, we see that there are uh, poll questions which have popped up, and 53% uh, of you all are saying that the maximum engagement uh, on the kind of social media content is around employee stories and testimonials, uh, not very different from uh, what our research indicates. 
All right, so open for any questions, uh, inputs, and thoughts. And now, if you have any questions, uh, you can also type in your questions on the chat, and we'll make sure to respond to all of your questions. So the boss has a question on uh, what factors are important for companies when selecting the uh, EVP focused areas, right? Uh, the best, I think that's a very good uh, question. And uh, the way I'd like to respond to that is that in our practice, uh, when we work with the client organizations to determine the EVP focus areas, we clearly go back to first and foremost, what are the EVP factors which they are strong at? Because those are the factors that they should continue to sustain in their EVP, right? The second most important factor is for them to determine what does the internal installed talent perceive of them? And what does the external or potential talent expect of them as an organization, right? What are the factors which are important to this uh, talent pool? And maybe you need to adopt some of those factors in your AVP, right? And the third criteria for us would also be to understand that from the eyes of the leadership team, from the perspective of your global macro AVP, what are the brand factors that you would like to uh, you would like your center to be known for, say, five to 10 years down the line. So looking at all of this three-dimensional approach, uh, we would recommend to the organization, what are the EVP factors that they must incorporate, brand factors that they must incorporate in their EVP. All right, so uh, Sharmila has the question uh, where she's asking, what has been our observation with respect to EVP led by branding team? Right. Um, so, Shamila, I'll try and answer this question in uh, two parts. Uh, one is, um, as you saw in one of the pointers that I had shared earlier, that we see that uh, there is a significant uh, lack of uh, autonomy with the India centers, which means that even though there are branding teams that get formed in India Center, but eventually the guidelines on posting, on posting the content, on the frequency, on the budget, and on the sponsorship are eventually resting with the global headquarters, right? Which means that they are operating within a limited construct. And therefore, uh, the hands are a little tied in terms of what they can and cannot do, right? And also what we see as um, a, a little bit of derailer is in terms of uh, branding teams being slightly disconnected from the HR team, right? So in our practice, we also recommend to organizations around what should be an ideal composition of your EVP or your employer branding team. It should definitely have some representation from HR, from business, uh, and, and also have a dotted reporting line to the global headquarters so that a significant amount of autonomy rests with the India Center. And then I think the second question that uh, Sharmila has is around, are there any recommendations with respect to internal and brand external branding to be separate? Uh, well, uh, Sharmila, I would say that the engines could be different, right? Your vehicles of branding could be different. But eventually, there has to be a consistency in what your external brand is getting communicated and what is the internal employee experience. Because if there's a disconnect between the two, you have the risk of, again, your employer branding programs being ineffective. So you could have different uh, medium, if I may say so, for branding yourself externally versus internally. But at a core of it, the DNA of the organization, the brand promise which is communicated should be consistent. All right. Um, there's also a question from Abhay, who would like to know how do I engage further with Zeno if you need to understand things uh, better for what the GCC should be doing for employer branding. Uh, well, Abhay, uh, just write into us at uh, events at zenove.com or talent at zenove.com. And uh, one of us will work with you to set up a call and we can take you through our employer branding approach. Uh, but even before that, we'd like to understand from you in terms of what your specific uh, challenges and pain points are because every single employer branding program that we conduct is very contextualized to the needs of the organization to where you are in your employer branding journey. Great. So any, any other questions, observations? Uh, do these pointers uh, resonate with you or you have a different point of view? I'd invite the audience to uh, please unmute themselves and share their thoughts. All right. So if there aren't any further questions on this topic, um, you can definitely uh, stay in touch with us at talent.zenove.com. 
uh, Pinky has just typed out that uh, note in the chat window. And also what I'd like to uh, keep you posted on is that a minutes of this event will follow right after to all the attendees. Um, so please have a look. And if you have any questions you'd like to engage with us, so uh, we'll be happy to connect with you and take the conversation forward with your uh, global leaders, with your India center heads or whoever uh, you believe are going to be the key sponsors for uh, your employer branding program. Uh, and not to uh, forget that we also have multiple other point of views, which uh, can be uh, available to you. Uh, just reach out to us. Uh, yes, a recording of this webinar is actually going to go up on our Zenov events page, Preeta. Uh, that's going to be uh, available on the Zenov events handle. It takes about a couple of days for the events team to uh, upload this recording. So please uh, don't miss to subscribe to the Zenov events page. Uh, the copy of the deck, uh, uh, Daniel, is um, uh, something which is available as an exclusive one to a client organization. So if you do have a GAP membership with us, uh, you will be receiving a copy of this uh, deck. Uh, however, if you uh, uh, do not have a membership, we'll definitely be uh, uh, sending you over the minutes of the discussion. And uh, if you do like uh, this uh, presentation and you would like for us to come in and present to your leadership team, we will be happy to do that as well. All right. So uh, with that, I would like to hand it over to Pinky for the closing note. Uh, Pinky, it's back to you, please. Uh, thanks, Priyanka. So before uh, going over the closing note, I would first want everyone to know that uh, over the last uh, 16 years, Zeno's uh, conference series has been one of the biggest platforms for the global technology and business leaders to come together to share their experiences and perspectives to drive technology narrative that will define tomorrow in today's uh, continuously evolving ecosystem. So the 2023 edition of uh, Zinov Confluence will uh, be held at Whitefield Bangalore uh, at Sheraton Grand. To register and reserve your seats, you can please uh, scan the QR code. So thank you all for joining us uh, in today's session. Uh, employer branding is a very dynamic and ever-changing uh, uh, topic for all organizations. And for organization to build a brand which relates to the talent, it is critical and very imperative to reinvent their employer brand with the current talent needs. With this, I would thank you all for joining us for today's session. And uh, in case of any queries and questions, you can write us at talent at Thank you everyone for joining.